What's up, everybody? And welcome back to Street Pods Garage. And by request of many people on Instagram who ask me, what is my mod list? What have I done to my bike? What year is the bike? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I today am going to go through everything I've done to the bike. And also I'm going to go and give you guys the plans of what's coming next. And we're going to talk a little bit about where this YouTube channel is heading with what we're planning to do for videos. And as always, I really want to have suggestions and recommendations because I'm a mechanic by trade. I'm a military mechanic and I can do a lot of stuff and I've done a lot of stuff with the bike. And I often do have questions about, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? So if you guys see something or need to know something that maybe I have missed or haven't done a video for, always suggest them below so that I can go ahead and do it. So now let's begin. And I'm kind of going to work my way from the rear of the bike to the front. And the uh, first thing that you guys see, the big obvious thing is that we have a fender delete and we have a 240 rear end. The 240 is from HD Wheel Customs in California. I also had a RC components a rear 240 kit. The reason I changed to the HD wheel one is because I really wanted to have the old school spoke look and they seem to be the best company out there to make matching sets of spoke wheels for the rear and the front. Whereas RC components is better for mag wheels, cool rim designs, or getting in the stalker kit, which matches your front rim on the full size scout bobber. So 240 rear end wrapped in a Metzler triple eight. And the reason it's wrapped in a triple eight and not an Avon Cobra, the Avon Cobra tires actually, when they bead, they blow out a little bit and they actually sit a hair wider than the Metzlers, even though they're both considered 240s. And I had found that the Avon Cobras are more prone to rubbing on your belt. Next, what you see here is my latest prototype. This is my near production function testing of the Street Pilots 240 rear fender. We're gonna make a shorty rear fender. It's gonna mount off your swing arm and it's gonna sit nice and snug with the wheel. It can move with the wheel, does not need all the clearance because it's attached to the swing arm. And we're gonna be starting to make these soon. Next, the piece de resistance that we have here is that we have the r not Cycles Air Ride. And we are gonna do a video that is more in depth on the Air Ride. Reason being is there is a big difference with the bobbers from the commencement of the bobber until 2020. And then there's a change and a little bit of a facelift from 2021 forward. And I had to do some fabrication to make these fit. Uh, the cool thing is, is they basically go up and down, make your bike look cool. Uh, personal opinion, I think your Owens uh, will outperform these for if you set your settings all right and you have everything preset for comfort and you want to be steady enough in turns whereas these are a lot better than your stock shocks but they are a little bit more show than go um, and let me demonstrate so here we go and we are going to air out now they have about two inches of travel from all the way down to all the way up and the best way to put it is all the way down is they are slightly lower than the stock Scout Bobber type of suspension and fully aired up. They sit a little bit taller than the Scout, the Cruiser version suspension. They will not lay your bike down. As you can see, there's still clearance under my pants. So if you're looking for that super custom drop look, these are not going to do that by themselves. You're going to have to make custom bracketry that can pivot and let your bike lay down if that's what you're looking for. Next, we have the Freedom Performance Radical Radius exhaust with no baffles. The reason I went for this exhaust is because if you look at it, I wanted to do a solo build and the curves of the pipes really match with the curvature of the tank. And I kind of feel like the, it is the most complete exhaust out there. I did like other exhausts as well, but to me, my personal preference is right there, that exhaust. Um, it's loud, as you've seen on my other videos, it's probably over 90 decibels, uh, but it sounds mean. And uh, personally, my 
personal favorite exhaust. Um, other things you see on the bike is you see our new sequential solo taillight, absolutely plug and play for the Scout Bobbers. Um, it has a cool startup sequence. It has a triple flash brake module. So when you press on your brakes, it will triple flash red before going steady for more visibility. It has amber sequential turn signals left and right. And as I mentioned, absolutely 100% plug and play. And you'll see the Street Pilot subframe plate. Now, I had the tank machine plate. It's an awesome plate. By all means, I think it's an amazing plate, but I wanted to make something more simple. And that's why we have the Street Pilot's plate. And then for shocks, just touching back, is that I did have Olins before. And if you guys have questions about the Olins, how to set them and how to ride them, I can probably get those answers for you because same as the RC kit, I've had both, I've tested both. So I have a little bit of an experience where I can give you my personal opinion on what's good and how to set and et cetera. So if you guys have questions even about my previous setup, let me know. Next, when looking at the tank, this is not paint. This is a wrap. It was done local to me here in Vancouver by a company called Prima Graphics. I believe they did an amazing job. Uh, we really went for the old school Indian look and trying to give a nod to the old school Indians by doing the more traditional logo. Underneath the tank, what you don't see is uh, we, I have a stage one Indian air intake and uh, I will be doing another intake. I am going to go the SNS route um, from everything that I've researched. That one has the best flow and the most power potential. We are dyno tuned. We are running a power commander to bypass the Indian calibration and codes because the Indian software is super restrictive and you cannot make big power. So we decided to bypass it with a standalone using a power commander. And we will have a video on dyno tuning and what it is, how to do it, what's your potential gain, do you need to do it as soon as you put on an exhaust and what to expect from tunes. Uh, what does a 60 make? What does a full-size bobber make? And where we're going to go with this bike. And then as we go forward, the other stuff we have is I have a matching set of covers for my rear and front master cylinders from Joker Machine. My uh, foot pegs are from Joker Machine. And then I have the billet Indian motorcycle shift pegs and back in the day they had a matching set of foot levers as well but unfortunately they discontinued them so now I only have these shift pegs and my brake peg and uh, man like I feel like they're the coolest thing out there and I really wish that Indian did not discontinue them. Over here on the front I have Dean Speed Zero drag bar, I have the Moto Gadget uh, bar end blinkers, I have Joker Machine levers, and then I have Joker Machine mirrors. Uh, I also have a quad lock. Um, I'm all wired in, so I work with everything here. Uh, if you guys have questions about the wiring of your Moto Gadget bar end blinkers, because you want to have this effect, let's put that on. Then uh, please comment below. We do have a video out on it already. So if you guys have questions, I'm happy to assist with that. Since this is a Scout 60, excuse me, Scout Bobber 60, it did not actually come with a nacelle. So what we have here is an Amazon purchase nacelle because the Scout Bobber 60s and the full Scout Bobbers have a different type of headlight. The housing is different. So the full size Bobber nacelle will not actually fit ours properly without some minor modification. So this one here, will fit your Scout Bobber 60 ones without a problem. And honestly, for about 150 bucks, it isn't too bad. Tank machine headlight grill, Amazon purchased LED headlights. Uh, what you see on the forks is our Street Pilots sequential fork lights. Again, plug and play and modified to work with the Moto Gadget bar ends. And then on the front, again, HD wheel performance matching set spoke wheel. 18 inch big and I would wrap in a Metzler 888 130 wide tire. Colt Work Customs, solid fork covers and a Colt Work Customs 
the old school front fender wrapped by Prima Graphics. So at this point, this is the current setup. Now let's talk a little bit about what we have had on the bike. I have had an Indian Stage 1 muffler. I have had the Owens shocks. I have had the RC components rear 240 set. Um, and I think that's about it. And moving forward, the next plans are, I wanna do better forks for the front. So if you guys have suggestions, please comment them below because I am researching and looking for a better front fork because putting uh, air suspension and raising it up to a different angle than stock has been affecting the performance of the front forks because your lean angle is not exactly the same, not exactly lean angle, or more so your tilt forward is different than stock. Um, street pilots, we're going to be making a front grill for the bike just to kind of keep the whole aesthetic in check. And as I always mention it, what's been happening is that my whole life, I was always all about having a bike that's or a car that's built and it's not just all show no go and kind of at this point even though we are dyno tuned and we have an exhaust we have an intake we're a little more show than go so we're going to be doing the revolution performance big board kit and since i don't want to rip up my engine multiple times we are going to do the revolution performance big board kit with andrew's 450 cams their revolution performance in-house ported heads we're going to do lightweight valves with uh, upgraded springs and we are going to do the actual big bore and we're going to see what kind of power that's going to make and then we're going to go either a recluse or a barnet clutch to handle that power and at that point i think i'm pretty much done with this bike and i'm just going to enjoy it and ride it as is now in terms of youtube here we are next video coming out is we have an interesting take i want to try out different oil so we are going to do an oil change to AMS oil and I want to see how AMS oil compares to the Indian Scout oil change kits. Another recent question and recommendation that I got is people want to see how to do the air ride install. So we're going to go do that again and we're going to show you guys how to do a 240 install and what you need to do with the 2021 and newer bike. And uh, on top of that, I get a lot of questions about how to do the 240. So we're going to show you and we're going to do a full 240 reinstall so that you guys can take a look at it and see that it's very doable by yourself. Then we have a dyno plan of showing what these bikes make, this one and the 2025. What's their power stock? Where are they lacking? Educate you guys a little bit on dyno tuning, what it's all about when you need to do it and see how much power you can make with intake and exhaust. And then as a later part, big bore kit, how to install it, how does it work, and what does this bike make when it's fully built on a naturally aspirated build? Because to keep the aesthetic, we're not going to do a turbo build. So basically that wraps it up. I appreciate you guys for watching. I know I talked a lot in this short video, I uh, just, wanted to summarize and answer a bunch of your guys' questions and uh, let me know if there's anything else that we can do as a video to help you guys in your build and in your install and as always i appreciate you guys and drop a subscribe for more content more installs and everything else ride safe